let me um, firstly set out the context uh, behind uh, the situation with the Greater Manchester Clean Air Zone. High levels of pollution uh, from road traffic have a major impact on people's health across Greater Manchester and lead to over 1,200 premature deaths every year. We are committed to cleaning up the air our residents breathe, but in a way that helps people to make the change and does not put jobs, livelihoods or businesses at risk. There is a danger in the current debate that the benefits of the clean air zone are being lost. So let me just state one of them. In the next few months, we will see over 80% of our bus fleet in Greater Manchester become compliant with cleaner emissions standards. This compares to around just 10% in 2018. So think of that difference. It's a huge difference. And actually, to kind of put it in very kind of uh, visible terms, picture uh, the end of the, the school or college day at any school or college across Greater Manchester and think of the students as they come out. It is a common sight to see a cluster of very old vehicles outside and obviously young people left to choke on, on the dirty air that results. That is a common scene, and the clean air zone, obviously, is, is going to eradicate that. However, and there is a big however, the current uh, Greater Manchester Clean Air Zone was designed before the pandemic. It was based on a legal direction from the government requiring action in all 10 Greater Manchester boroughs to clean up the air, and to achieve compliance in as short a time as possible, and by no later than 2024. It is the nature of this government direction and the tight timetable which has shaped the CAS proposal as it now is, together with the government's requirement that we use a charging clean air zone as the default option. We have repeatedly raised concerns over a number of years about the level of funding being offered by the government to help people upgrade vehicles. These concerns intensified last year when the effects of the pandemic became clear. Think, think back to the Tier 3 debate, because there's something of a parallel here. The government imposes a restriction on Greater Manchester, but then fails to help us to implement it and to support people who are affected. It is a direct parallel to what we went through in late 2020. You might recall, some of you covered it, I criticised the government's failure to agree to our request for hardship funding. That would be for people with the oldest vehicles who would have the biggest financial gap and who would find change hardest. That was just refused. We didn't get that funding. In addition, I commissioned work last year to look at changes in the vehicle market so we could consider the impact that the CAS proposals would have on individuals and businesses given the pressure that we were seeing on global supply chains. That pressure has restricted the availability of new and second-hand vehicles, which in turn has led to major price inflation, up to 60% on the cost of a new compliant van. And that was the evidence that we revealed because of the work that I commissioned. The evidence indicates that compliance with air quality standards by 2024 is now not achievable. The Prime Minister today gave the impression that his government has so far had nothing to do with the Greater Manchester Clean Air Zone when he described it as completely unworkable. I must remind him of the facts which he seems to need on a daily basis at the moment. First, I am not and have never been the instigator nor the final decision maker in this scheme. It is his government which initiated it when it placed a legal direction on each of our ten councils. Second, by setting a compliance date of 2024 straight after a pandemic, it is his government's legal direction that has become unworkable. And third, 
It was Greater Manchester which drew attention to this, not the government. Our joint Clean Air Committee of the 10 councils voted to refer this back to the government in January. And I personally relayed the request to lift the legal direction, the unworkable legal direction, to the Environment Secretary last week. And I asked him to grant us more time for compliance. More time is essential as it creates the conditions for a substantial evidence-based redesign of the scheme under a new legal direction. Given that the disruption caused by the pandemic will last for more than a year, clearly, it is reasonable to request a new time frame and corresponding delay to the period to achieve compliance. Such a delay would provide the opportunity to make significant changes to the CAS to allow supply chain issues and market conditions to stabilise, whilst finding more effective ways to achieve compliance. In short, the more time the government is prepared to allow, the greater the level of protection that can be provided to jobs and businesses in Greater Manchester, and the less punitive the measures will need to be. This is why I am asking the government to allow the longest possible time scale. Below, I have set out what I believe to be the consequences of the CAS being implemented in different years beyond 2024. However, responding to the concerns people have raised, and there are many legitimate concerns that people have raised, and I have been listening, and to provide clarity where we can, there are some basic changes needed in any scenario and a new direction to allow for them. And let me just take you through what those four changes in any scenario uh, that, that we think are needed. First, that the clean air zone scheduled to begin on the 30th of May 2022 continues, but does so as a non-charging GM-wide category B clean air zone, including buses, HGVs and non-Greater Manchester registered taxis. This will allow people time to adjust. And instead of fines, people will be contacted to advise them where they can find support. Second, that all private use leisure vehicles, such as motorhomes, camper vans and horse boxes, as well as cars, motorbikes and mopeds, are permanently exempted from the CAS. Third, if the evidence supports it, that there will no longer be a Greater Manchester-wide Category C zone, including vans and Greater Manchester registered taxis, but either a reduced Category C scheme or no Category C scheme at all. Now, this decision will depend on the government decision on an amended year of compliance, and I'll come back to that. Fourth, to reconfirm that this is a temporary clean air zone, a temporary measure, which will last no longer than it is needed to achieve air compliance. Early discussions have already begun with Greater Manchester Police with regard to the potential use of the ANPR infrastructure in the second half of this decade for policing purposes. If this proposal was to be taken forward, there would be a full public consultation on it and all of the implications carefully considered. So it is now for the government to decide whether they are prepared to set a new date for compliance and what that date should be. It is important that people are aware of the consequences of this decision. So let me set them out as we believe them. If the government permits a delay to compliance to 2027, compliance could be achieved without requiring a charging CAS scheme. And I would suggest redesigning the scheme with that aim. The focus will be on targeted action to increase compliance. Instead of fines, as I said before, owners which have been uh, in breach, where the vehicles have been in breach, would instead be contacted and signposted to support and funding. The longer time period would allow real-time air quality data to be analysed to identify any areas which could continue to exceed the legal limit. A decision could then be taken on whether additional localised measures are needed in those areas to achieve compliance by 2027. 
If the government permits a delay to compliance to 2026, I would propose a similar approach to that described for 2027, but additional measures could not be ruled out. There would need to be a highly targeted approach to non-compliant vehicles in areas with continuing air quality exceedances and sufficient government funding to support upgrading of vehicles. This would be intended to avoid any move to charging, either as a GM-wide Category B scheme or additional smaller Category C scheme, but that could be the result. We have to be straight with people of the government's decision. If the government permits a delay to compliance to 2025, it would be more difficult to achieve, and whilst a non-charging Category B scheme would still apply from May 2022, it is likely that charges would have to apply at a specified point, and a smaller charging Category C scheme introduced in 2024, which would have to be informed by further evidence. To support this approach, the Government would need to allow more of the £120 million to be used in the early stages of the scheme. So in conclusion, only the Government can decide the timescales for compliance, and I've set out the scenario for 25, 26 or 27. And it's for Ministers to decide which of these scenarios they choose to impose on Greater Manchester. Failure to lift the current ministerial direction leaves all ten councils with a scheme that will harm businesses and, according to the latest evidence, not achieve compliance by 2024. A delay to 2026 or 2027 will make the CAS much fairer while still achieving compliance by the middle of this decade.